You've probably noticed that when you're writing an automation script and with Google Apps Script, you often have to loop over data. One way to do so is by using a for each loop. I'm Chanel Greco from Saperis, and in this video, I'll give you a deep dive into Google Apps Script for each loop. Would you mind subscribing to my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below? Because twice a week I publish video tutorials about Google Apps Script and Google Sheets and so on, and I want you to benefit from these videos. In a previous video I published, I showed you how the for loop works in Google Apps Script and how you can use it. You can act actually watch the video right now if you want to as there'll be a card hovering over my head somewhere here that will bring you to the video or you can also watch it at the end of this tutorial as I'll link that mentioned video in the description below. And by the way, if you would like me to make a comparison video, so for versus for each loop in Google Apps Script and when to use which, then go ahead and leave me a comment below. Just write something like four versus for each, and then I know that this is a topic that you want me to cover. Now it's time to dive into the for each loop in Google Apps Script. And the first thing I would like to show you is a resource where you can go and read about these methods and, and, and how it actually, how they actually work and how to use them. And keep in mind, we're writing Google Apps Script, but it's a scripting language based upon JavaScript. So what Google has done is they've taken JavaScript and they've added kind of like the Google Apps, the objects that you can use to automate Google Apps, but it's still JavaScript. So under the hood, it's JavaScript. So if you want to understand, for example, how the for each loop works, well, then you can go ahead and look at resources that explain how the JavaScript for each um, loop works. And that ex that's exactly what we're going to do. So a very good resource to find out how JavaScript or Google Apps Script works is the MDN Web Docs huh? by Mozilla. And here we see the for each loop method executes a provided function once for each array element. So here there's also an example. This is just using the arrow notation, a bit different uh, no, a way to write a function. We'll be using the conventional way. Um, but this is a place where you can go ahead and run this function and see what happens. So that's a good place if you're let's say maybe a bit newer to coding or just want to, to read up on how something works. Now we're going to change the setting and go to a Google Sheets document. And um, we're going to have two separate for each loops here. The first is uh, that we're concerned about is this one here. This is the one we're going to have a look at. So let's dive into data tools, sorry, script editor. There you go. Good. So what we already have is our sheet, our range, and our values. And we're reading um, A1 till C5. So just for your reference, let's go back to this from here to here. That's what we're having a look at. Good. Next up, what we want to do is now we want to actually create for each loop and loop over these values that we have. And we do so by saying values dot, and here we have our suggestions for each. And this is our function that we will be running on each item of this, um, or on each element of this array. That's the better way to put it and it'll be the value. So this is the, the value or the element that we'll be looping on on every time. So usually it's the singular of what the, 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 the variable is. So values, that's a whole array, and value, that's our separate element every time we loop. So let's do so. 
And now we're going to do something really simple. Logger, log, and we're just going to log out and we're, we're, we're going to say here is the row data and then dollar sign and like so and then whatever's in value that's what we'll log out semicolon here semicolon there let's save this um we'll run it there you go um if you're running this the first time then you might be or no then you for sure will be asked um to give the server permission to run your code so you just when the the request for permission comes just accept it so that the server can actually run your code and we'll head over to um i'm always looking for it because i use the shortcut usually so on mac it's it's a command enter and through the menu it's view logs okay so what we did now is with our for each loop we logged out every separate row hmm? okay so that's how that works let me close this out so really easy this is our array values dot for each then we have to give it uh, a function so something that it's going to do for every single element of this array and in our case it's just locking out the string with the value so with the whole data of that row now for our second for each loop, we're going to be using these um, values here that you see these four cells here. Let me go back to script editor. Here I have a second function, which I've named multiply data. And I went ahead and I got our active uh, spreadsheet, the range, and this time I've saved the values in a variable called numbers. Just to make this a bit more clear what we're doing here. Now, please keep in mind, this is just a deep dive into the for each loop. This isn't actually a uh, code that you would want to write in, a, in an automation script. What do I mean by that? Well, you see how I'm getting the active spreadsheet in this function and this one again? Well, that's the same active spreadsheet. If this were a real automation script where you have multiple functions doing different things, well, then you typically would get the sheet somewhere outside of these functions and then just pass them on to the functions instead of having to get the same information again that you already get got at another point in your automation um, script. That just doesn't make sense. But to keep this easy and also for you easy to work along and that the function in itself works, I'm getting this information again. I now want to create an array, an empty array, and I'll call this mold. You know what? Let me just go and copy paste it. Uh, that's much, much faster. There you go. So we're instantiating a new empty array. And then we're looping over our numbers again with for each, our function. And this time we're referencing number. It's actually up to you what you want to call that there, that parameter. So close that out before I forget it. And now I'm going to say, just because I trip over long words, multiply dot push uh, number times two. And then what we're going to, oops, that was the wrong thing I need a semicolon otherwise it's going to break and then we're going to lock this out the values that are in our array here let's save this so maybe let's back this up what are we actually doing here we have our empty array here and then we're looping over our numbers so those are our that's the array that we have with the values from our sheets that I showed you before. And we're saying that for each of these elements, and number is kind of like the placeholder for each element in each loop, we'll push it to the array, but after we've multiplied it um, by two. And then once we finish this for each loop, we're going to lock the whole thing, our whole new array multiplied numbers um, 
out to our logger log. Now, think about this, huh? Why did I instantiate the multiply numbers outside of our for each loop? Why didn't I do this in here? Leave me a comment below if you know why. Good. So now, since we have two functions, we have to actually choose which one we want to run. We'll run this. No errors. That means we have valid Google Apps script code written. That's very good. Now let's let's look what has been logged out. So we're looking to see what's the content of the variable multiplied numbers. View logs. There you go. These are our multiplied numbers. So what it did is it took every item of our initial numbers array and then it multiplied it by two and it wrote it into our, sorry, it wrote it into our new array. Hmm? So that's a way how you can use a for each array. I think that sums it up pretty good. Please go ahead and leave me a comment below if something's not quite clear or if you want me to go into details or something. And please don't forget, if you want a comparison video um, for loop versus for each loop on when to use which, then do leave me a comment below and do me a favor, subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can become a Google Apps Script Pro in no time.